Hello, everybody, and welcome to another uh, live episode of The Health Show. This is episode number 10. My name is Siobhan Guthrie, and I'm coming to you from uh, my Westport Kinesiology Clinic on a bit of a dull July day, um, but looking forward to talking to you about leaky gut and digestive health in, in general. Um, our mission here is to help provide you with um, information that will empower you to look after your own health, take responsibility for your own health, and um, you know, not feel a victim to health issues or symptoms and giving you some viable options when it comes to looking after your own health. So um, for me, my own story around kinesiology was very much to do with digestive problems. I, um, I thought most of them were normal. Uh, it was just the way I worked. And, uh, and so when I first started kinesiology um, in 1995, I came with uh, very much skin problems that I thought were skin problems. I had uh, digestive uh, bloating, I had food that kind of just seemed to explode in my stomach, um, alternating um, diarrhea to constipation to, you know, just how, how I worked. And when I came to kinesiology, I had lots of things going on. There was definitely some trigger causes were food sensitivities. Other things was, um, there were some valves going on that um, we have a valve, um, at the digestive of the ileocecal valve. I'm gonna show you a demonstration on that today. Uh, as well as I had also had a hiatus hernia. And kinesiology is great for um, helping to re-sit where the stomach is sitting through the, through the diaphragm. And so once I got rid of, you know, kind of balanced those as well as, you know, avoided food sensitivities, uh, then, and, and dealt with my stress. So, you know, with everything that we do with um, kinesiology zone is very much about, you know, there's not just one thing that's the main thing you know there's going to be it's going to be coming from all different aspects of our integrated um healthcare kind of solution that we have so i dealt with the emotional stresses i dealt with uh, food sensitivities and also corrected some valves and and other structural issues that were going on in the body and so now you know so then what happened having dealt with all of that my skin completely cleared up um you know, my energy levels improved and digestively now everything kind of functions, <laughs> functions properly. And if, you know, at the same time, it's like, you know, sometimes there's a stressful times that I'm going through and um, maybe uh, fall off the wagon a little bit, but I always know how to get back on. And I think that's what you learn. That's part of the journey of getting to um, better health is that you are, you know, you, if you, if you steer away from the, from the health path, and you discover new things that are, are more healthy for you, then it does help to, um, you know, to get back on when, when, when things have gone a little bit astray. So, um, you know, so kinesiology, what's it doing? It's really looking at um, what are the underlying causes uh, in our lifestyle. Uh, health issues are lifestyle, uh, usually lifestyle related. And, um, you know, maybe a digest, maybe if your digestive system is reacting to a food, and sometimes it's reacting to the stresses that you're under. Um, you know, so you can get triggers like emotional traumas. Sometimes, you know, everything you, you kind of go, well, why am I suddenly sensitive to um, to wheat? I've been eating it all my life. Um, that was that was pretty much what I said. You know, at 25, it was like, okay, what why suddenly am I reacting to wheat now? And there was other triggers that had been going on in terms of stress as well. So, you know, when you're going through an emotional trauma. Um, sometimes, you know, what, when you come out the other side of that, uh, you know, maybe a year later is when your body finally relaxes and it starts to, um, starts to then go, you know what, there's something you need to heal here. There's something that needs to, is not doing your body any good. And so when we listen to those signs, then, um, then, you know, we can have um, optimum health. Um, also, what's really interesting about the, um, in terms of the energy of the body and the muscles that are related to, we connect our, um, we connect our meridian system with the muscles. And through our, one of the philosophies, the law of the five elements, we can look to see whether there's, um, you know, in terms of the small intestine, which is obviously part of the gut. So what small intestine is related to choices that we make, um, you know, in terms of what food are we going to absorb, what food are we going to kick out. And large intestines related to grief, um, but also letting go. And so maybe there's some things that we need to let go of. So we can look, once we know where the digestive problems, um, or where the digestive problem priorities are, you know, is it something going on with a particular area of the body, 
then we can start to you know, investigate further and see what else might be going on. So we're talking about the leaky gut uh, today, and I suppose uh, it sounds not very nice, but um, you know, the gut is permeable to a certain degree. It's where we absorb you know, our nutrition from. Um, so there is a, there is a, a permeability uh, factor to the, um, the intestines. Um, but of course, if it's, if it's too much or too long term, then other things, um, uh, other things can get, can, it can become a problem um, with the, uh, the long term permeability. You don't want it to be too permeable, um, which allows not nutrition and things that you need in the body, but larger molecules to get through. And so therefore, um, that can um, you know, lead to hyperpermeability and not beneficial to allow other things into your bloodstream, causing then maybe being a root cause to other joint pains, migraines, um, long-term kind of um, even autoimmune diseases, like starting this, you know, starting, what starts off with maybe a little bit of an infection, maybe you get um, uh, food poisoning or something, those can all be triggers to something later on um, that if it's not dealt with. And so while antibiotics may absolutely save your life, uh, it's killing, you know, it's getting rid of your good intestinal flora. And so therefore you want to make, absolutely want to be taking probiotics after you've had, you know, dealt with something that was, you know, an emergency. So uh, major causes of permeability problems, well, na naturally aging is going to be part of it, but improper digestion of any sort, whether that's emotional, chewing, not chewing your food, like eating gulp, 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 and, uh, and not chewing very much can also be a problem. Uh, a lot of people don't digest their food properly, and so maybe there's a low stomach acid issue that could be a factor, and uh, I'm not going to show you how we test for that. So lack of HCL, a lot of people have um, you know, they, they're maybe drinking bottles of Gavascon or eat, or I should probably mention brands, but drinking antacids or taking lots of tablets um, for a problem that may be due to low, low stomach acid. So HCL and digestive enzymes are something, sometimes things that we help, to, that we help uh, our clients to resolve um, digestive problems in general. Um, you sometimes have structural issues going on in the spine. So maybe your spine is out of alignment a little bit. Um, and... Uh, uh, yeah, we talked about the, the good bacteria, etc. Uh, low fiber diets also increase permeability. And, you know, sorts of problems can be, you know, food allergies, eczema, um, irritable bowel syndrome, which I know when I, uh, when I remember a friend of mine had, was, had been kind of like, she thought she had irritable bowel syndrome. And I remember her going to the doctor and the doctor said, there's no such thing. And it is definitely a, a, a diagnosis of exclusion. It's like, well, there's nothing else. So you've just got irritable bowel syndrome, a collection of, of um, symptoms, and and that can be frustrating because you know it, it, from our from our perspective, you know, there's lots of things that you, that can be done, and um, and there's loads of things that um, yeah the body the body can heal itself, and so we just need to remove all those kind of triggers, um, you know our reaction to emotional stresses, uh, foods and things like that. So um, in terms of treatment, I'm going to uh, do a demo on on Natasha again. And so you'll get to see a little bit about what we do. But for those of you who are kind of wanting to know, well, what do I do that I've, you know, I've got? Um, I feel that I've got leaky gut or um, digestive issues. Certainly what you want to do is you want to be removing any predisposing factors. So anything that, such as um, antibiotics or steroids, or um, you know, sometimes even our amalgams can, can play a role in our, in our digestive system. Um, Increase kind of your insoluble fibers, um, anything to decrease inflammation. Your vitamin D3 is very good for that. Turmeric, um, ginger, vitamin C, zinc, all those sorts of things are very useful. And you want to uh, replace then, you know, take some HCL with food. One small, one tablet per meal is usually, usually required. But if you have a larger meal, you can have two tablets of HCL. If you know that HCL is the problem. Um, or lack of HCL. Some good bacteria, take that last thing at night. Um, any kind of probiotics, you know, including yogurt, uh, can also help. And then repairing the gut is very important. So repairing the gut can often be done with zinc, L-glutamine. L-glutamine is great for brain fuel as well. So um, definitely uh, well worth, well worth uh, trying that. It's an it's a amino acid. 
and omega-3 oils are fats are essential um, essential fats such as omega-3 um, is used for all sorts of different things but you know again it may be a deficiency of that that's causing um, part of the part of the issue um, all your b3s and your b5s that we did adrenal stress in our last episode and so b3 and b5 are very good for the adrenal uh, adrenal supporting the adrenals and vitamin c of course and um, you know and so yeah, we've got lots of things that we can cover. So what I'm gonna do with uh, Natasha, we haven't done a run through, so we've no idea what um, what we might be dealing with, but uh, stress is, um, is you know, definitely an underlying cause um, of, and, and things that we're doing in our lifestyle. Um, we talked about stress, I think last time, and talking about, you know, the body perceives stress, it, whether it's dehydration, lack of, lack of sleep, uh, emotional stresses, food stresses in the same way. And so stress can literally shut down the digestive system too. So we could be, you know, pulling our hair out, trying to find the underlying cause around in our foods, you know, because obviously food plays a role because it's going through this tube of our digestive system. Um, and you may say, well, I've tried giving up wheat and I've tried giving up dairy and other food sensitivities. And actually we haven't dealt with the other underlying causes, which are around the emotional side um, or going to, you know, going to bed too late, things like that. So, um, you know, if you do have gut problems, you'll often have um, liver because the body's having to deal with those um, toxins um, in the gut. And so headaches um, might be a symptom, um, fatigue, uh, palpitations, uh, dizziness, um, fluid retention, another, another um, common thing. Uh, skin irritations, like I said, you know, the skin, I had really bad skin. A coated tongue uh, can also be uh, a symptom of liver toxicity. So this is where the liver is kind of getting kind of overwhelmed by, you know, what's not leaving the gut in an orderly fashion. We should be moving our bowels um, twice a day and uh, at least once a day. And um, anything less than that it is officially um, constipation. Even if, you know, I think my worst client was like two, three weeks before they moved their bowels. So it's like, you know, where is it going? And so the liver is having to deal with those toxins. Um, and so very important to, um, at the very least, work with um, improving your bowel function. Um, so, there, you know, essentially there will never be a full uh, recovery in health if the uh, digestive system is not brought back into a healthy state. So uh, definitely a really big part of what we do with um, kinesiology and uh, I definitely recommend you come to a practitioner, systematic kinesiology practitioner. If you go on to kinesiology.ie, there's a full list of practitioners there. That's the association. And then just to let you know, of course, that Kinesiology Zone is running a roadshow, a health roadshow, uh, starting this, uh, this Sunday in uh, Westport. And we're going all the way up to Donegal, Sligo, Chewham, Fermoy, New Ross, and up to Navan. Uh, all free talks and so I encourage you to, to come, along, come along, meet the team, uh, have, um, you know, here's some interesting information and also you get, um, if, if there's not too many people, we'll have be able to give everyone a, a quick treatment, quick uh, assessment and, uh, and then on, we have a series of taster events where you come in and you learn this for yourself, which is, uh, which is great because so many of our students and practitioners uh, have become practitioners not even realizing that it was something that um, they could do for themselves. So it's really exciting. So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to just show you now a little bit about how we do, how we test for the various areas of the body. And so we've got Natasha up here and uh, hopefully you can see me okay on, um, on Facebook Live there. So we have, um, we have, as I said, kinesiology offers um, a, an opportunity to assess what's happening with the body and uh, we use muscle testing to do that and you know what what we're learning is that you know this is I obviously understand what's going on I'm here to interpret the results of the muscle testing so what I'm doing is that I'm not saying oh well you know I know that you're sensitive to something you know like wheat or something we're allowing her body to reveal where the imbalances are and so I think it's very respectful of where people are and, and also, you know, what needs to be fixed first, which is always very, which is always very interesting because, you know, if we're not assuming what, uh, what the problem is, then, you know, we can allow the body to tell us. So we have some muscles that are um, associated with different areas of the body. 
Um, this one in the, in, this is the, one of the pec muscles. You're going towards your head, okay? So pull back for me. So this is a muscle associated with the stomach. And, uh, and again, pull back for me. So you can see how both of those are strong. But if I put the two together, okay, and you're gonna push this way, and push together for me. When we do that, she goes weak. And that can be, can be associated with low HCL. So we're already getting an idea that, you know, maybe um, if she does have um, digestive issues going on, that maybe they'll be supported by, by taking the HCL. And, um, uh, and that would be with, with each, each food and with each, uh, with each meal, I should say. Um, so that's, that's one clue that we get. And, uh, and that's, what, that's what really kinesiology and being a practitioner is all about, finding as many clues as possible. Um, okay, I appreciate the time. <laughs> so let's go to quadriceps. So if you lift your leg and bend the knee, and you're pulling towards your head, and pull back for me. So that's nice and strong. And same again, and pull back. Lovely. Okay, so they're nice and strong. And we also have, I'm going to test this muscle here, which is going to bring both legs over to there. And you're pushing out that way. And again, pull back for me. So that one is going weak. And we've got this one here, and again, push back for me. But that one's strong. So we've got this one over here is weak. All right, push back. Yeah, she's not able to do that. But let's just see if we get her to hold this little valve I was telling you about. This is called the ileocecal valve. And uh, so what we're going to do is you push back there again. Now it goes strong. And what that means is that this little valve is involved in why this muscle is weak. This muscle is a quadratus lumborum. It's in the, it's in the lower back. A uh, very strong muscle, and uh, and so uh, important with back pain. Um, you know, this is where I think it's really, really cool that you know she may come in with back problems, and we find that there's some digestive problems going on, and that without fixing those first, uh, you're not going to be able to like the back pain is still going to continue. So this is a little ileus ileocecal valve. Um, there's uh, ways and means in which we fix that. I'm not sure we have time to necessarily do all of that just now. Um, but what we can do, another, so we've got our coronavirus and boring, which is involved, which is the reason I chose that one is because it's involved with the large intestine. We also have some other muscles, the large intestine. So if you bring this leg up and you're pushing up towards me. So that's also going weak. Um, and from that then we can see whether or not L-glutamine whether wheat might be involved. Um, we can, so we can check to see food sensitivities. We can check to see whether there's a nutritional supplement that helps. And we can also check against other, uh, other factors, other triggers. So, uh, so let's just get you to think of something stressful. As I said, large intestines around grief, letting go, um, and you know, other, other things like that. So I don't know if that means anything to you, but you can, you can maybe just think of that. We don't need to know, which is, uh, which is also helpful for people to be able to connect in with their, their kind of deeper um, emotions. You got something in mind? Okay, so let's stand up again for me. And so push up for me. And so that's gone nice and strong, which tells us it's, it definitely is part of the reason that that muscle is weak. Um, so what we would be doing is we'd be fixing that valve. I think I'll leave that till, um, till after, the, after the episode. Um, what else have we got? Um, we've got some good bacteria that we can test as well. So just to see whether or not something would be beneficial. Um, the way that we do that. I've got about five or six different types of, of probiotics here. So just to show you how, you know, kinesiology you can discern what specifically someone needs. So um, pull back for me. So it didn't make any difference for this one. So we no point giving her that. Um, let's try this one and again push back for me and that goes lovely and strong so all you can see is that you know I could say oh well, this is a great this is a great supplement you know yes everyone needs probiotics but what kinesiology allows you to do is to find out precisely what uh, what that person needs so you know you're not taking something that's a waste of time because it's not fixing anything so um, so yeah I think that's how are we doing on time? We've got about seven minutes left. Have we got any questions coming through? We do, yeah. Um, we have a question here. Um, Kara's, I'm not sure if I'm getting the name right. She has questions in, um, have liver LS high, psoriasis, arthritis, could this be all part of a gut problem? 
Yeah, absolutely. If you want to, if you're, uh, we're done here. Thank you, uh, Natasha. So, um, yeah, so the question is around uh, arthritis. She has suffering psoriasis, arthritis. Psoriasis. Yeah. Arthritis, yeah. Okay. Uh, liver and LFI. Um, well, you know, the liver is doing what it has to do um, with toxins. So I would definitely want to um, understand what else is going on. Um, as we saw, we, our diagnostic tool is working with the muscles and seeing what else, um, what else can we gather from, from that information. So um, what we saw with Natasha there was that she had a little valve issue going on, and I will fix that. Um, but also she had some muscles weak and some of those could be supported by, you know, by probiotics, L-glutamine, zinc, all those sorts of things would be beneficial. Um, we'd also work with the lymphatic reflexes. So I think I've shown you those before, but the lymphatic reflexes uh, for, the, for the large intestine, they're kind of like the side of the leg. So again, we'd be balancing the muscles. So we're looking to see what are the underlying causes. Um, the, gut, the health of the gut is so, so important and definitely involved with, uh, as we said, skin problems, uh, joint pain, low energy, uh, feeling toxic uh, is all part of it. And so if you have symptoms of that, then you need to, yes, balance the liver, uh, balance the large intestine, um, get the start of the digestive tract working well. So like what we saw with Natasha was that she, when we, we did a certain particular test to see whether uh, low HCL was a factor, and it seems to be. So uh, obviously this is a demo and um, you know, it's not a full, full assessment, but certainly if you go to a practitioner, you'll be able to get, find out precisely what you need, what, what are your key issues. A lot of people, you know, low stomach acid feels a lot like, like too much stomach acid. And so there's a whole industry, if you go down to the supermarket and you see, uh, <laughs> see the choice of antacids that you can buy uh, for all sorts of different uh, reasons. Um, but it may be a problem of actually too little stomach acid, and so we're treating it in the wrong way. Um, so yeah, if you if you have any um, if you have any long term issues that you're not getting, any chronic issues, you know, systematic kinesiology is excellent at helping people find the underlying causes. And so you know, if you something chronic, something long term, it just means you're still doing something that uh, is is a factor that needs to be needs to be addressed. Any other Yeah, and um, yeah, um, Anya just wants to know, like, in regards to food, um, the best foods possibly would diet be a big part? Di well, yes, diet is a big part. And uh, one of the things about uh, leaky gut is that, um, you know, wheat, so we talked about the permeability. So we've got the permeability is um, being exaggerated for some reason. There's a, there's a factor called, or there's a substance that the body makes that helps to release the to create um, permeability, to allow nutrition and things to go out into the into the bloodstream, so we, it's there for a reason. But zonulin um, sometimes can get over overstimulated and leaves those gaps there for a longer time. And so if your zonulin is high, uh, then that can be a factor. And so wheat and things like that will help to um, uh, increase zonulin. And so that's definitely something that you would want to avoid. This why wheat and other kind of gluten grains can be a factor. In um, in leaky gut and other and seemingly unrelated issues like you know joint pains and headaches, um, but you know we are everything's connected. You know our shoulder is connected to our neck, which is connected to our head, and so um, you know yes, an issue that could be coming that is in your head could be coming from your stomach or your or your uh, intestines. So definitely, you know, a whole person approach. That's what we do with kinesiology. We're very much looking to see what can we do for the whole person and not just treat various symptoms um, that, yes, could be connected, absolutely could be connected and often are connected. But, you know, we're looking at it from how, how do we join the dots of this issue with that issue? Um, so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that, uh, that helps. And, you know, it's hard to give advice, particularly for one person, uh, but you know, generally, it, I would recommend that you, you see a practitioner and, and really understand what's going on for you. Um, sometimes we've got stuff that happened years ago that we don't realize is actually impacting us uh, today. 
So, anything else? That's it. Now I think give all your time. Okay, super. Well, as I said, as I mentioned, we're doing the roadshow um, in um, all around Ireland. We're really excited. The team. Uh, I don't know if you've seen some of the flyers. If I if I put the flyer up, it'll be the wrong way around. But um, all of us here at the bottom, uh, we're all very excited to be um, coming to, as I said, lots of different areas around around Ireland, and uh, we're doing talks in the evening from seven o'clock to nine thirty. Um, lots of free talks, free demonstrations, uh, options to you know have a if you want to have a go as well, and uh, and so yeah we're going to be we're going to be <laughs> we've got these new t-shirts so um, we've got our t-shirts um, and um, on the back it says uh, the natural healthcare solution fully integrated natural healthcare solution I know you can't see it on Facebook Live it's a bit back to front but um, we are uh, going to if you want to win one of those um, we've also got we've also got our our hoodies and uh, and so the, the hoodies you'll see us wearing these hoodies again with our uh, with our saying on the back and uh, so we're looking forward to coming around to Ireland but if you'd like to win one of those t-shirts um, what we do what do we need them to do a hashtag of health roadshow. health roadshow and register for the the roadshow and anybody who registers from this health show and um, when are we going to announce the announce tomorrow morning Oh, tomorrow. So you have to act quick. Yeah. Uh, so tomorrow is Thursday. So let's say till, um, let's say 11 o'clock. Yeah, maybe 12. We'll see. 12 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, so we've got 24 hours basically to, um, to um, um, either you can comment below this video and uh, with the hashtag um, Health Roadshow and, uh, and then go and register on the website. So you register on the website by going to um, kinesiologyzone.com forward slash roadshow and you pick one of the venues that you want to be you want to be attending and we'd love to see you there it's like we're going to be showing you things that you can do to master your own health and lifestyle um, help you to kind of deal with chronic fatigue and stress as well as digestive problems we're going to be doing presentations as well and um, and then also you know talking a little bit about you know as we get older the increase in um, aging and uh, dementia uh, is very scary um, because it talks about one in three people are going to have dementia and if you if you're not the person who has dementia then you're going to be the carer of someone who has dementia so it's it's a thing that we are maybe not we think is maybe an older person's disease but actually is a uh, is also getting younger a bit like diabetes diabetes was adult onset diabetes what's going on with with you know our stress and food um, uh, that it's actually becoming much younger as well so we're going to be talking about all of those things and we're really looking forward to seeing everybody uh, there, meet people in person and, uh, and kind of uh, really take on, you know, uh, healthcare in Ireland and making, um, making holistic health very much part and parcel of our healthcare system. So I think that's everything. When is our next, our, our next episode we're uh, going to do? 23rd of July. That's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday, yep. 12.30. 12.30, Wednesday, the 23rd of July, um, uh, August. August. And we're doing... Yeah. We will be covering weight loss, diabetes, and blood sugar. Blood sugar. We're going to be talking about blood sugar, that whole thing of cravings and um, what you can do to help to um, just have more stable energy throughout the day, not crashing after two o'clock in the afternoon, really stabilizing energy and, uh, and yeah, getting being able to be more productive, I suppose. Okay, I think that's everything. Thank you, everybody, for joining us live. Uh, great to see you all, and uh, look forward to seeing you next.